Hello and welcome back. So I'm going to start carving these three tiled blocks. Um, one of the best tips and bits of advice I can give you at this stage is to make sure you have your reference drawings in front of you so you know what to carve and what to leave. Or when in doubt, do go back and colour in the top of your block just so that you don't get confused. So it can be helpful to kind of colour in and go over so that you know what you're going to be carving and what you're going to be leaving. So if I look at this initial drawing here for this particular tile, anything that is coloured in with pencil I am leaving, I'm not touching. Anything that is white is what I'm going to be carving out. So let me grab a few carving tools. I've got a little box of all my things here. As usual, make sure your tools are lovely and sharp and we get going. So I do like to give myself a bit of margin around these blocks, um, especially with the rubber blocks, because if you, sometimes if you're carving right up to the edge of a block, the block can actually sort of crumble. So it is quite nice to be able to run your design off the edge of the square tile and then we can trim the block with a knife at the end to get our exact square. Lovely. So I'm carving out these corner white circles to begin with, marking the edges using a thin, I think this is a one millimeter U tool. I never know the precise names of these file tools because I've had them for such a long time. I often get people ask me, oh, what number tool is it? I have absolutely no idea. I just know that it's a small U-shaped gouge that I use all the time. <laughs> Um, now I'm going to mark out these, no I'm not going to mark out those V-shaped tiles, I was almost about to take that out, what I'm taking out is this central bit, so you do need to pay attention. I would probably, don't do what I do, which is talk and carve, um, it can certainly distract you from what you're supposed to be doing. Now with a design like this, I actually find it's great to do an element on one side and then turn it around and do that same element on the other three sides because then you get into a rhythm and it means that you make sure that you do the lines exactly the same. There's, there's almost a, f a feel to it so when you're carving your, there's, it's a muscle memory I suppose, that's the best way to explain it. There's a muscle memory of how the curve was literally just created on one side and then you can create that same exact curve on the other three sides. Okay, so I'm just marking out those elements and then I think it's probably a good idea to work on that little V shape that sticks up. And again, I'm going to do that on the first side, on the second side, on the third, and then the fourth. And I start to relax into this and enjoy. And if you remember from some of the carving stuff we've done before, do keep your, keep your hand relaxed as you're carving. Turn your block if you need to. So here when I'm creating a circle, I'm doing that by keeping my hand and the carving tool itself still. I'm actually just rotating the block itself because then I can get a lovely smooth curve as I go. But also don't fret, it's not going to be geometrically perfect you are hand carving this you know you are not a machine <laughs> um, you're not a carving machine um, you're a human and and I think the thing that is lovely about block printing is the human element is the is the wonky lines is the uniqueness to it and I've just carved that and I actually think I really like that that additional little circle I'm just going to leave that in for now I think it's wonderful um, so let me now work on creating these little leafy doodles that come through here. Leafy doodles, of course, is a technical term. And again, I'm going to repeat this all the way through to all four elements so that my block does match up. Great. So it can sometimes be quite hard to see what you're carving and what you're not, especially at this stage when I'm actually just carving out the outlines and the lines. So as I said at the very start of the video, always keep your reference 
um, drawing next to you, in front of you, so you can see very clearly what you should be carving and what you're leaving. Um, and then I tend to, once that has been done, I then start to take out with a slightly bigger cutter. This one is a flex cut tool. This is from the Micro Palm set, I think. Um, I've got a few tools that I use again and again and again. They seem to be the, the ones that just feel right for me, for the size of carving that I do. You'll all have personal preferences. Um, I do like to use very thin veining tools, which are the thin one to two millimeter tools. For, like it's called a veining tool, I suppose it's for creating thin veins. I like to use those. Um, but everyone's different. I incline towards U-shaped tools and I use V's for very fine detail. Um, if I'm creating points and sharp edges, V's are brilliant for that. V tools are also great for um, straight lines. Um, I think it may be that because I do quite a lot of work with curved lines in, I like my U-shaped tools. Um, but you'll get used to your tools, you'll get used to using them and deciding what you enjoy using what your favorite tools um, so you can see here now I'm going in small stages I'm always carving away from my body and I'm keeping my spare hand my left hand well away from the blade <laughs> that would be great teaching wouldn't it if I um, was demonstrating cutting and then managed to take a lump out of my hand as well <laughs> Okay, so this is going really rather well at the moment. We are getting through our cutting, so I'm going to continue on and I will rejoin you in a few moments' time. Okay, so I finished the um, carving here, so you can see what has been left on the top here is what is pencil over here on the design. What's been carved away is what was white. And I've just added an extra little ring that kind of occurred as I was carving. So I am somebody that will go with the flow and will kind of allow a design to develop as you go through. So I could carve different marks and things into this if I wanted to, but let's keep this as it is for now. Um, I tend to refine my designs on every stage as I go through. So each time, you know, when I trace, I fine tune. When I transfer, I fine tune. When I carve, I fine tune. So very often the finished design has just got that extra tiny bit of tweaking from its very first version um, and sketch. So now that my design is carved, and you can see I've run the design off the edges of the square of the tile. I'm now going to trim the tile using a metal ruler. Important to use a metal ruler um, because a plastic ruler you will um, you'll probably end up slicing the ruler um, and a craft knife. And you want to keep this almost directly vertical so you get a very straight line. We want our tile to be as accurately a square as possible. The more you repeat a tile, so the bigger your pattern is, so the bigger the piece of fabric, if you're just even a tiny weeny bit off, it will begin to show with the bigger the amount of printing you do, if that makes sense. Okay, so I'm just going to trim the last few sides off so that we've got a beautifully perfect square, or as perfect as me as a little human can carve. And then this one here. Great. So there we go, we have our first fully carved um, tile. So what I'm going to go and do now is work on to carving the other two tiles that have been, been worked on using the different methods of having sides that match. Um, and then we'll get printing these. <laughs> 